is if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am, I really am honored to be here. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to celebrate every man and every woman of God here. I truly honor every one of you. And I was so blessed just listening to the worshipers one worshiper after another I, I almost didn't want to come out honestly i was just you know most times i hardly go for meetings and receive i'm always the one giving so receiving is a real privilege for me thank you so much may god bless you hallelujah amen i will only be here for a few minutes this morning but I trust in the name of the Lord that the encounter will change our lives in Jesus name let's hold hands together and just pray for a few minutes and then we'll sit just lift your voice and pray call upon the God who hears the God who is able to give beauty for ashes joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. One of the revelations, you know, in, in every in every season of my life there is always something god is saying to me there is always a dealing of god in my life there is always a dimension of his grace that he's revealing to me sometimes it can be his power sometimes it can be his wisdom sometimes it can be a dimension of him it could be anything but in the last two three months afresh as though i never knew him and i never knew it god has been revealing to me the love of god you know paul said the grace of our lord jesus christ and then he said the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit that it will abide with you so i have for me it's not just because i'm a minister but it's been a revelation afresh the lord has opened my spiritual understanding to the depth of the love of God you know Paul said it and many times we think we understood what he was saying it is true that time does not change anything but time truly reveals and time helps you understand as I see the faithfulness of God in my life and I see what he's helped me do in the lives of people and even in a generation I am really broken I'm humbled and many things to many people but I am more concerned about what I am to him 
and it's amazing how far God can go this is a very powerful message no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me it's my testimony there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me hey. no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me all the overwhelming never ending all oh, we chases me down fight still am found leaves the 99 thank you Jesus still you all oh, the overwhelming father reveal your love once again grant us grace to rejoice and to joy in all that you are and all that you have made us become we give you praise even this morning in the name of jesus please be seated hallelujah in revelation chapter 5 john had the privilege of coming up to the throne room and he experienced the worship of the lamb and of the ancient of days and john said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book i wept and the reason why i wept was because no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals then an elder tapped him and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed we're about to open the book and that means that the weeping of someone must come to end this morning in the name of jesus when the book is open there is no more weeping i want to talk very briefly about a very deep spiritual mystery very profound spiritual mystery in the kingdom we learn god by the dimensions of him captured in mysteries a mystery is a hidden truth that is only privy to a people who belong to a group belong to a cult belong to a fraternity and in the kingdom we have been granted access to learn God and he broke himself into dimensions this is Jesus the way he reveals himself He's a compendium of mysteries and so he helps you to learn him and to learn the kingdom by unfolding his operations his modus operandi we call it mysteries and one of it is what I want to share very briefly tonight the oil of joy Habakkuk chapter 3 please the prophet was communicating something that looked like a very unpleasant situation Habakkuk chapter 3 will start our reading from verse 17 Habakkuk okay you don't have a project in here oh dear Habakkuk chapter 3 we'll start from verse 17 if it's projected and you can see just shout amen so that I know yeah. all right so go ahead and read one two read please 
Ajá. Hold on. Notice that he's talking here about harvests. He's talking here about results. He's talking here about fruitfulness. He's talking here about disappointed expectations. Are we together? There is no disappointment when there is no expectation. And so he starts by saying, although, that means he begins to list several scenarios that you can have. Let's read on again. Ready? One to read, please. Uh huh. Next verse. Hold on. Yet, yet, I will rejoice although this and that and that will not happen yet that means that by default i should not rejoice under that kind of condition are we together now in light of all that he's listing i should not have any reason to rejoice and then he says yet i will rejoice and he shares a very powerful revelation read on please and i will joy in the god of my salvation he never said i will joy in the god of heaven now i hope you know that one of the ways we know god is through his names he captures his possibilities in his names the god of abraham is not the god of isaac the god of isaac is not the god of jacob that means the dimension you will see when the god of abraham shows up it's not the same thing you will see when the God of Isaac shows up. So he's saying here that when it has to do with these situations, I do not rejoice because I am happy seeing them. There is a revelation that sponsors my consistency that there is something I know about God called the God of my salvation. Are we together now? so the prophet starts by opening up a scenario that reflects tragedy pain defeat loss disappointment and then he says in the midst of it this is my position yet i will rejoice and then he says i will not just rejoice blindly my joy is tied to a revelation that the name of god is also the god of salvation is the word yehoshua the one who saves that's where you get the word joshua from the one who has the ability to save that means my joy is hinged on a revelation that it is possible to look at the things that are unseen that although i am seeing a scenario that does not reflect what i desire it is within the power of god to turn things around and so i do not waste my time mourning on things that can be changed please follow me very carefully i will rejoice in the god of my salvation the one who is able to turn the wilderness to a fruitful ground the one who is able to turn things around the oil of joy proverbs chapter 17 please and verse 22 proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22 ready please read one to read a merry heart do it good like medicine uh-huh now there is a powerful revelation there that a merry heart is therapeutic a merry heart has an advantage to your life an advantage to your christian experience that is simply is in the similitude of what medicine would do to a sick patient watch this now he's talking about strength he's talking about vitality and he's saying that when a man's heart is merry that is able to supply strength akin to a doctor's prescribing medicine to a sick patient but then he says a broken spirit can dry the bones 
that means something can start from the realm of the spirit and affect you physically that the depression can start from the realm of the spirit and dry you up physically you begin to wither like a tree that is cursed and the bible says the result is that something about a merry heart has been detached from your life proverbs chapter 18 18 and verse 14 proverbs 18 14 please proverbs 18 14 a man's spirit can endure sickness let's use this for now okay thank you it says the spirit of a man will what help me sustain his infirmity but a wounded spirit who can bear that means there is no man on earth who sustains the ability to indefinitely bear a broken or a wounded spirit now please follow this this is a very serious diagnosis about man these men are bringing dimensions and they are saying something about the absence of joy and merriment in a man's life can literally lead that man to death psalms 45 and verse 6 blessed be the name of the lord psalms 45 and verse 6 it says thy throne O God please look up is forever and ever an everlasting throne the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter next verse verse 7 now thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness are we there and then he says therefore god we're reading verse 7 thy god hath anointed you with a kind of oil that is called the oil of gladness and that that oil ensures that you are always above your fellows now listen very carefully remember he's talking about rulership and the longevity of dominion that your throne and the scope of your dominion and influence is everlasting and that the mystery behind it is that an oil was placed upon your life he calls it the oil of gladness that because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness the reward i have given you to keep your throne everlasting is to put an oil of gladness upon you that sets you above thy fellows the oil of gladness go to isaiah chapter 61 isaiah chapter 61 is the messianic prophecy it speaks about jesus in prophecy and then by extension the church it says the spirit of the lord is upon me it starts from verse 1 isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1 the spirit of the lord god is upon me please look up because the lord hath anointed me so we are talking about an ordination an anointing and it begins to list all the things that the anointing should produce number one to preach glad tidings to the meek number two he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted number three to proclaim liberty to the captives number four the opening of prison to them that are bound verse two please to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all that mourn next verse verse 3 please look up to appoint unto them that mourn in zion how does he solve their problem to give them beauty for ashes uh-huh the oil he's not giving them joy he's giving them the oil of joy for mourning he is giving them the oil of joy for mourning and then the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness as a result of these equippings the bible says they will be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of our god and then in that he will be glorified the oil of joy the oil of gladness
joy is a revelation in the dealings of God with men that very few people have understood very few people have understood the mystery and the role that joy plays in granting that a believer walks in the experience of victory now please follow me very carefully you're dealing with a meeting here that talks about shouting and i want to show you the mystery of joy joy is a requirement to get the intervention of god in a man's life it is not only faith it is not only prayer joy is a principal requirement if a man will experience the hand of God the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 that we should rejoice in the Lord always rejoice in the Lord always and again I repeat rejoice he never said rejoice in results rejoice in the Lord there is a name he is called the God of salvation rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice apostle james now was talking to us in chapter 1 and verse 2 james chapter 1 and verse 2 he says to count it all joy brethren he's mentoring believers and he's saying my brethren count it all joy not all loss when you fall into diverse temptations count it reckon it express joy in the midst of it and the revelation is in verse 3 it says knowing this that means there must be something you know for your joy to be there knowing this you are privy to an information that keeps you consistent regardless of results knowing this there is something you have to know for you to be unbending why should i stand in the midst of pain and still rejoice why should i lose a loved one and still rejoice why should i stand in the midst of obvious shame and disappointment and still rejoice why should i be a testimony of doom and still rejoice he says knowing this there are things that you know he said for we know that all things they may not know but we are privy to this information that all things can work together for them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes. Now look up please. It is natural for men to mourn. Jesus himself wept. Are we together? Jesus wept at funerals. Jesus was angry when a tree did not produce the kind of food he needed to eat. So, we see that the humanity of Jesus played out in his earthly ministry. And so, people can get angry, people can weep. But God is teaching us a lesson that there is a position that a believer can stand. You can posture yourself by revelation and you will always win, not just in the battles of life, but you will find yourself consistently walking in victory in this kingdom and the bible says for anyone at all who by intelligence can access this oil that the bible calls the oil of joy you must be anointed to be joyful joy is not something that humans can do all the time it is not given to men to be consistent regardless of circumstances please look up the reality of our humanity does not allow us to laugh and marry all the time when you stand before a dead body of your loved one and you laugh and rejoice they will call for a meeting and ask you what sponsored that wicked disposition as they would call it if you stand in the midst of fire and stand in the midst of pain and laugh and rejoice the bible testifies that you are not normal are we together now yes that means that when I see something that gladdens my heart I rejoice when I see something that causes pain I should not rejoice I should follow through 
but when a believer remains consistent regardless of the vacillations of our results the bible says that there is a grace that sponsors that consistency it is called the oil of joy thy throne O god is forever because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows joy is a requirement for supernatural intervention god does not intervene just because he's a mighty god there are requirements that mandate and allow his presence to come listen very carefully the bible tells us that paul and silas were two people who on account of the gospel are we together now they were held bound with chains hand and feet and the bible says they were kept in custody of a jailer they knew listen with the kind of pain and humiliation that they had gone through there was no reason to even pray but the bible says at midnight at midnight they knew that if they would get god to intervene they must engage this principle and the bible says paul and silas prayed they didn't pray because they were served dinner they didn't pray because the jailer said i will smuggle you out the bible says they prayed and they sang in the midst of it remember that there is a law in this kingdom you only reap when there is joy there is no guarantee for a harvest even if you planted a seed until joy allows it he says that those that sow in tears they will reap not with joy in joy it's a realm that allows harvest please follow me very carefully and so they began to rejoice in the lord and then the bible says that there was an earthquake and suddenly the chains fell off and the jailer wanted to kill himself and he said no 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 we are here we are safe there's no need to hurry if you bind us again it's a principle that works all the time there is no hurry we we have mastered the art of bringing ourselves out of any prison that when we're in the prison we don't talk about the prison because the name of god under situations of pain is the god of salvation yahushua the one who can show up and bring salvation and save to the uttermost the oil of joy the oil of gladness listen very carefully there are two things that joy produces in the life of a believer that i want to just touch on and then we'll pray number one according to nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 joy is the principal sponsor of the strength of a believer nehemiah chapter 8 please and verse 10 it says neither be ye sorry don't walk as if there is no hope it says for the joy of the lord is your strength please say that with me mina the joy of the lord is my strength one more time the joy of the lord is my strength it says neither be ye sorry that means there is a way out of that tragedy there is a way out of that situation and it says the joy your strength in this kingdom is the joy of the lord remember the bible testifies that if you turn aside in the day of battle the diagnosis is that your strength is small paul prayed a prayer and prayed that the believers be strengthened in their inner man and i'm showing you that one of the systems that make for strength is that you must be full of joy that the joy of the lord supplies strength what is strength the stamina the fortitude to remain until you win it's called strength but the people that do know their god the bible says they shall be strong there are times that the battles of life are not won overnight it may take time oh abraham you may need 25 years do you have the stamina to wait if you cannot wait you will always give birth to what will fight your promise when your strength is weak ishmael will come and interrupt what isaac should become and do it takes strength all the days of my appointed time i will wait 
Waiting is the hardest thing for a believer to do. Not praying, not fasting, waiting. Because five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not look like it. It takes stamina. Please listen to me. It takes stamina to remain when your wife cannot take in after two, three years. All kinds of options begin to fly. And when you go to God, he will tell you what he told you before the marriage and act like he's not aware of what is happening. It takes strength in the spirit to remain. It takes strength in the spirit to remain when the ministry is not growing. And having invested efforts and everything, you're not getting the kind of result you should get. You usually will feel like giving up. But the joy of the Lord that is based on a revelation. Ah. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Not our deliverer. I don't know what you believe in. The Bible says some trust in horses. Everybody cannot trust in the name of our God. Some trust in horses, some chariots. But for us and for me, I know that though he slay me, I will trust him. I know that it is within his power to save me. Ah. Say to those that are fearful hearted, do not lose your faith. The Lord your God is strong and with his mighty hands when you call on his name. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. The Bible already tells us that while we look not at the things that are seen, that means the things that are seen can deceive. They act like they will remain forever. The poverty will act like it cannot go. The challenge will, let me tell you, challenges are bold. They have an audacity that intimidates. There is something about God you need to sponsor your stamina while they stare at you. Every challenge looks immovable until God comes. Please listen to me. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A man can be depressed. Have you seen lately the rate at which people literally, I mean, they depress themselves to death. They go to the hospital and they cannot find out what is wrong. And the person will tell you, I cannot think. I'm, I'm just depressed. Notice that the character of depression is that it brings you to a point of silence. Where you cannot talk, you cannot celebrate. Hmm. The joy of the Lord, bringing strength and vitality. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to come out of this situation, but I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Bible speaks about scripture. And says all things that are written aforetime. Please look at me. He said that they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. The meaning of that is that there are times in your life where you do not know and you are not sure whether or not God can show up over that issue. The Bible tells you to make reference to Scripture and check: Has God showed up for someone like that? If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. In the Bible, God lifted men. In the Bible, God delivered men. 
in the bible people slept as prisoners and woke up as prime ministers in the bible women who were village girls within months became the wives of kings in the bible farmers became prophets in the bible prostitutes joined the lineage of jesus the bible says that these are archives to encourage you to sponsor joy so that if and when i do not know how my life is going and i cannot explain what is happening i can check through scripture and say i know god is faithful jehoshua the god of my salvation he will show up for me and as bold as this challenge looks i know that if i join to cry listen the moment there is weeping god's power cannot come it takes joy joy is a magnet listen to me i know that it is human to cry it is human to grieve but it's a spirit that continues to drive breakthrough away from you you must sustain an impartation that grants you the grace to smile through storms you don't smile because things have changed you smile and rejoice to change them if you wait for things to change for you to have joy then they will never change that's why it's called joy in the holy ghost it is it, it is a possibility that comes from a dimension that is not normal for men to have please listen to what i tell you i have seen this in my life and i've seen this even while i minister that people who are sad and angry and frustrated and gloomy almost never receive god has to find a way to prime their joy and if it does not work the anointing comes directly on them to laugh 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 away space for god to come and bless them because it it seems as though their their hearts are close towards the things of god joy is powerful hallelujah the joy of the lord is your strength the first thing joy does is to produce health and vitality it is true that when joy dries up you will be like the tree that has been cursed number two psalms 67 joy is responsible for extraordinary fruitfulness you want your life to be fruitful beyond measure joy is a requirement psalm 67 we'll start from verse 1 please give it to us quickly god is changing someone's life this morning it says be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us verse 2 that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among the nations verse 3 now let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee verse 4 oh let the nations be what glad and sing for joy for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth verse 5 it says let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee verse 6 then not before then shall the earth that means while you are mourning the earth still has the potential to bless you but your lack of joy will not allow the power of god move upon the earth to bless you i hope you know that this earth is talking about is not just the ground your helper is also made of earth and there is increase within him your destiny helper is a piece of earth that can be used to yield his increase and the earth whether as your boss and the earth whether as your landlord and the earth as any one of your destiny helpers can yield their increase and then he says and god even our own god shall bless us show me a man who understands the revelation of joy i show you a man who can turn anything around anything around it sounds very simple 
but I tell you this is at the back of the continuation of the pain and the tragedy of so many people in ministry in business we come back gloomy we come back angry and we are frustrated and you know you will always find a reason to be unhappy especially in our side of the world today you will always find a legitimate reason to be angry look at me let me tell you this did you know that the moment you are frustrated the natural effect is that you will want to see others frustrated as a way of healing you from that frustration if you are angry you will want others to be angry for you to be happy for some reason men are designed that way a happy man will want to produce happy people an angry person will want to transfer that anger to others the joy of the Lord is my strength and that when I rejoice the earth can bring its increase there are always legitimate reasons please hear me listen very carefully there are always legitimate reasons why we are angry while we are gloomy it looks like things are not working in around our lives but those who understand the joy of the Lord are people who will continue to stand when you look at them you do not know when they are passing through storms and when they are having a very good time there is no difference because they are always happy how are you today bless the lord bless the name of the lord i just heard that your mother went to be with the lord last week yes it's true but i give god glory the lord give it the lord take it blessed be his name so how are you going to do about that rent now well i know that god will provide god is a mighty god he will supply be real be real use your common sense wisdom is profitable to direct i understand that's why the wisdom directed me to be joyful in the lord you see that show me a man listen I teach you what I live by you will never at any point find me sit down in regret trying to say Lord you did not do this Lord you have not yet done this Lord when will you do this Lord have you done this Lord you did not finish doing this my life is ever joyful as a revelation it's a risk to lose joy it's a risk in this kingdom when you lose joy. I will sing and I will praise even in my darkest hour through the sorrow and the pain. I will sing and I will praise I lift my hands to honor you. Hear it. Because your word is true. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. I will see. God is not a man, Mina. He does not lie. If he speaks, even if it's a mistake, it must look like his mistake. He, he cannot lie. Hallelujah. I teach you how to cheat life. I teach you how to play life like a chess. You will always find a reason to not be happy. Listen to me. Things will always find a way of attempting to mock God in your life. The greatest mistake you will make is to turn and start discussing your pain because everything you continue to meditate upon grows. And so you find out that the mountain continues to grow. Turn your back from, away from the mountain and focus on Jehoshua, the God who is able to save. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. He is able to save to the uttermost. It was a principle in scripture that the nation of Israel were given as a secret. That every time they went to battle and their enemies compassed them and it was clear that defeat was imminent. Every time they noticed that they were, the enemies were greater than them, God taught them to drop their swords. Notice the nation of Israel never fought if it was clear that the enemies were greater than them. They used another strategy. They would stop and say worshipers come to the front this battle now if we dare use knives they will kill us like chickens we need to engage another mystery you are good and your mercy is forever 
It was a chant. It was a formula given to them that when all things fail, invoke the mercy of God and his goodness and the battle will turn around completely. God is speaking to someone this morning. People have already prophesied your life and they are right except for this morning. Everything they said is supposed to happen. Without any effort, you are already in all kinds of traps. But watch the power of joy. Joy is a magnet. It puts pressure on the power of God. It puts pressure on the integrity of God. Son, you have a reason to cry. And yet you refuse to cry. Even if you cry, you turn your cry into a song. And you sing and dance and rejoice. Listen to me. It was the dance of a small girl that removed the head of a prophet. Now that's very dangerous. A prophet, an army came to attack Elijah. He called fire on them. Yet John the Baptist, the greatest prophet, when a lady rejoiced before a king, his head went for it. joy let me tell you how the holy spirit works it have you gone to pray sometimes over a situation you drag yourself to the place of prayer as if you are going for a funeral and you lock the door and you don't even know how to start do i say our father in heaven do i say god have mercy what 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 will be the the starter of my prayer and suddenly it looks like a joke while you are praying in tongues somewhere in your prayer it's like an impartation comes joy songs begin to come sometimes songs that are only for that secret place when you finish prayer you cannot remember the songs again and notice not every song will minister to you because at that point the songs are ladders you are climbing your way out without knowing you are not just singing i show you how it works god wants to come but your heart is closed in anger in pain there is no way you can reap because there is no joy and then he finds a way by his spirit he can use a song he can use something that gives you gladness and all of a sudden you will find out that a well of joy is in your heart and usually when that well comes you will find a song listen one of you know that you are walking in joy when you don't lack songs lacking songs is proof that something is wrong with your joy life it has nothing to do with a being a musician you receive these songs and you begin to sing them sometimes you cry while you are singing them and satan the master of the flesh realm is projecting the difficulties before you finish that prayer and and address the issue of your child here your child is about to die this is stage four cancer it's about to kill him and you forget about your child and begin to sing and begin to rejoice and sometimes you begin to dance like a fool and sometimes you begin to sweat singing and dancing for a long time you are allowing the mighty god the god of your salvation to show up i tell you he will turn things around when you allow him to Many years ago, we were going to have, that would be our first crusade. On our way going, the program was going to start by 5. And at about 2, 3, we were still on our way going. And the car spoiled. There was nothing we didn't do to that car. The car refused to start. And it was not in a place where we would easily get a mechanic. It was a very serious situation. And then one of us just took the guitar and started to play out of frustration you know just felt what do i stand to lose and he started playing the guitar and then we started praying in tongues and then one person would join then one person would join then one person would join true story i tell you the truth and i lie not eventually we started blasting in tongues and praying such an impartation of joy came upon us did you know they kicked that car it was like a joke and it started like that and took us down to that crusade ground I have seen the power of joy. I have seen people who they have finished employment 
and it was very clear that they would not get anything but they went back and said lord you forgot to add my name let me remind you i cannot remind the boss i don't have his number i cannot remind the hr department but i can remind you i know how to get to you you know how to get to them you are called the father of spirits so i will save myself the stress of looking for a manager and lobbying around and they lock their door and rejoice and dance like madmen and while they are doing that they are allowing the god of their salvation god will begin to move and say stand up and change this stand up people have gotten all kinds of victories because they understood joy kenneth copeland asked bishop oyedeko one time and said you claim we are the ones who mentored you in church growth and faith how come you have all of this large crowd and bishop oyedeko according to him he laughed and said i danced every one of these people i danced them one by one in the spirit you can dance your prosperity you can dance your healing you can dance your child you can sing your victory you can sing the key that is missing to enter your hand back where is the key that opens this door is missing i tried to search and i did not find it i maintain my joy and with that joy there will always be restoration yet i will rejoice yet i got the report but yet i will rejoice There's somebody in this nation, I will not mention the name. The first time he produced his album, it was as if he, he produced it just for his family members. After the labor, you can imagine how painful that kind of thing is. When you invest time, energy, and all you know to do. And he got in touch with me and said, Apostle, I don't understand the meaning of this nonsense. God called me. I'm sure I'm called into the music ministry. And I told him, I said, don't worry, my friend. Rejoice sing the same songs sing them alone in your room if nobody is inviting you rejoice and while that guy began to rejoice god gave him one song that has opened him up now and opened the nations for him please do not underestimate the power of joy there are things that have happened in my life on account of joy you can lock yourself in the room and open every other door while you are locked you are opening doors strange doors that people will say how are you doing it it is the power of joy the joy of the lord being your strength there are people who die before they die there are people who fall before they fall they give up easily at life preachers packing up saying look i'm tired of this ministry business people going down all kinds of people going down but let me tell you this hear me the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tent of the righteous. It was that shout of joy that made them victorious in the first place. So if they keep it and it becomes their habitation, then there will be no reason again for mourning. When I found this principle in my life, I knew that I found my way out of trouble. Every time I am in the midst of anything that looks unpleasant, whether for me, whether for ministry, whether for my family, I don't have the time to sit down and discuss and say, Kai, you see the way this life is, Nigeria. Huh? This is November. Look at the way my life is. You talk like that is exactly what you will see. Is God speaking to us? Apostle, you don't know the situation I'm at now. I'm not even sure if I'm still a student or not. The last time I saw the carryovers, I couldn't even see the end. I just turned my face and left. Are we together? Apostle, you don't know how many people I'm owing right now. I'm owing millions and billions. I cannot even sleep. It's a choice. Listen to me. Let me tell you this. If crying does not solve the problem, try joy. Because in any case, you are already in trouble. So don't be afraid to explore. You are already in trouble. There should not be fear when your fear has met you. You should have the courage to explore. The rent must be paid. It's 500,000. How much do you have now? 7,000, home and abroad. Have the freedom to explore because in any case you are in trouble. 
you have tried crying you called your uncle he said you didn't call me last week i'm so sorry if you had only called me last week but you can turn back and say lord i don't know the name of the trouble i'm in but i know the name of the lord god that is a strong tower and i choose to rejoice Makapo shala and while you are saying that all kinds of calls that are threatening you are coming and you are rejoicing somewhere along the line yehoshua the god that saves will show up he will show up like a mighty man of war that he is and turn things around i have seen this in ministry i have seen this in life i've shared my testimony when i, I was i was shown a vision of my mother's funeral i was watching in a vision like i'm watching people my mother's funeral case closed people were crying don't feel bad if you've lost your loved one i saw everything go down and i was so touched and when everything was done i prayed after prophesying i celebrated god and rejoiced let me tell you my mother is healthier than many of you in this place she's alive it's true very healthy very agile it's possible she's even following this meeting now health and vitality the mortality rate in africa continues to drop because of this although we are the happiest people they say yet we are the ones that die more that means we need to check what we're doing are we together now yes have you seen people drive themselves to death alone on the road he's driving and he's calculating Seventy-five thousand plus 850 uh, roughly five, and then the next thing he's dead you see young people walk on the road as if they are mad they stand on the road and they are just calculating 900,000 ah, is he not supposed to be all, and you are saying what are you doing sir? Is, no 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength I refuse to act like one who does not have a savior Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say, you are mighty to say, forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing one time. Savior, Savior. He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. You are mighty to save forever. The author of salvation. You rose and conquered the grave. So when persecution comes, count it all joy. They meet you in the office and say, do you know that they are discussing you right now? We're about downsizing and I clearly heard them calling your name. You say, no problem, God is faithful. No. Hey! So this is how this life will be. No, no, no. Somebody shout, no way. Don't give the devil permission to destroy the word of God concerning your life. Insist, maintain your space, gather your strength and stand. I will not bend. Satan, you will not see my tears, not for you. I will cry before the Lord and I will worship, but not for you. I know there are mountains all before me, but I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not on my own understanding, the Bible says, in all my ways, I acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. He says, be not wise in your own understanding. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I know that God will arise as a mighty man. The psalmist said, many are they that trouble me. Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. But here is his testimony. But thou, O Lord, he says, you are a shield for me. That you are my glory. Here is the prophecy. The lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head while you are discussing jesus that died he only died for three days he didn't die forever while you are discussing the jesus that died he's already 
is arisen already the men in emmaus were talking about the jesus that died whereas he had risen rejoice not over me my enemies i may fall but even in the pit i rejoice listen to me joy is powerful he put a new song in my mouth the bible says the song of praise to our god he says many will see and fear and put their trust in him this is my life i truly live a very peaceful life and i truly live a very joyful life dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye